own five and a half percent of Apple. It's probably the best business I know in the world. Two thousand years later, we have sold shares. Warren Buffett reduced his Apple holdings by thirteen percent. And when asked why, he spent eight minutes and fifty seconds speaking, well, about taxes. We don't mind paying taxes at Berkshire. We now know that he likes paying taxes, but we did not really get a clear answer as to why he sold his Apple shares. But if you read in between the lines and also you read the past letters of Berkshire Hathaway. You are going to understand why he really sold the shares of Apple because this is a move that he actually made before. As soon as I heard his answer, the first thing that came to my mind was Geico. Apple increasing its share buyback, Warren Buffett selling his stock position. This reminded me of a similar move he made in 1983 with then his largest position, Geico. And five hours later, when he was asked again about Apple, he did compare it with Geico. This reinforced my hypothesis. There may be some little guy inside the iPhone or something. I, I have no idea how it works. I know what it means to people, and I know how they use it, and I think I know enough about consumer behavior. To know that's one of the great products, maybe the greatest product of all time. I actually saw it with Geico when I went there in 1950. I didn't know exactly what I was seeing. In 1951, a 20-year-old Warren Buffett wrote an article about his favorite stock, Geico. According to him, Geico was far superior than the average insurance company. More than two decades later, in 1976, he increased his position in Geico and bought 35 percent of the company. It was the largest position in his portfolio, and he maintained that Geico was a far superior business than the insurance businesses that he already fully owned. American Express, which is a wonderful business, we own Coca-Cola, which is a wonderful business, and we own Apple, which is. An even better business. You notice the similarities with Apple today. So, if Geico or even Apple are so great companies, the best that there can be, why sell today? Well, the market was quickly to understand that Geico and even Apple are great companies, and the stock price of these companies went up. That's how Geico at some point became 35 percent of his stock portfolio. And if you include the book value of Berkshire Hathaway, it was 55 percent of the book value. And I'm sure at the time many people were worried about the overconcentration in Geico, just like today people are worried of the overconcentration in Apple. And just like Apple today, Geico had a lot of cash back then, and there was nothing they could do with that cash except to buy back shares. And they were buying back shares aggressively. The shares were expensive, but they had no other choice. So what they did was to make a tender offer to Berkshire Hathaway to Warren Buffett, buying the shares. From him, and he agreed to this deal. Back then, there was a rule: if a company is buying back shares, and you have a tender offer selling the shares to them, and you maintain your ownership at the same percentage level, it is counted as a dividend. And dividends back then were taxed at a lower rate compared to capital gains, so he was saving on taxes. Today, this rule doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. But according to him, he is saving on taxes by selling shares of Apple. Warren Buffett then went on to fully acquire Geico in 1996. Today, it is a subsidiary of Berkshire Hathaway. I loved on 100% of it. <laughs> so why he didn't buy more shares of Apple and let them buy back their shares until he owned 100% of the company? First of all, it would have been harder. Because Apple is much bigger than Berkshire Hathaway, and secondly, we need to understand something extremely important: capital allocation of Apple and also of Berkshire Hathaway. The smartphone market has become saturated. It is very unlikely that Apple will be able to grow its revenues by double digits per year, like it has been in the past. Apple is a great business; they have great margins. Compared to many companies, they are able to generate over 100 billion US dollars in free cash flow a year. They have been able to achieve this in recent years through services, which added to their smartphone and hardware business. But this cannot continue forever. There needs to be a point where Apple will likely going to grow only two, three percent a year, and this point is coming very soon. Warren Buffett understands this very well, and it's not an issue. There is nothing wrong owning a company that is growing at the same rate as the American economy. It's just like owning American Express or Coca-Cola. But here, the problem is that Apple has become too efficient and is generating 
too much cash. This is a big problem for Apple. With so much cash, there is nothing they can do except to smash the like button. Now that's what you do. What Apple has to do with its cash is to buy back shares. They cannot reinvest in other businesses because there's nothing good to buy. They cannot pay dividends because this is taxed at a higher rate. So the only option, which is good for both shareholders and the company, is to buy back shares. The share prices go up, shareholders who want to sell, they can sell. And those that want to hold the company, they can be happy that the number of shares are going down. It makes sense for Apple to buy back their shares. But unfortunately for them and for the shareholders, once a company has started buying back shares, they cannot stop. It's just like dividends. That's why we have those companies called the dividend aristocrats. When they are paying dividends, they cannot stop paying dividends. Otherwise, the market will be unhappy about it. It is the same here with buying back shares. Apple is buying back over 100 billion worth of shares a year. So next year, it is expected that this will increase. They cannot say that they are going to buy back only 50 billion worth of shares because then the market will be unhappy about it. So once you start, you have to keep going. No matter what, no matter how high the stock price is. Warren Buffett knows this and I'm sure he's not very happy Apple buying back shares at 30 times earnings. When he was buying shares of Apple in 2016 and the company was also buying back shares, Apple was trading at 10 times earnings, even lower than that. But now at 30 times earnings, of course, he's not happy about that. At 30 times earnings, that is you take one divide by 30, you have around 3%. This is the earnings yield of Apple. So before Apple, let's say, could borrow money at 1% and they were buying back shares at 3%. So they were making a 2% profit, a sort of arbitrage. Unfortunately, now interest rates are higher. So they are borrowing money at 5% and buying at 3%. When you borrow money, in a way, you're shorting cash. So they are shorting at 5% and buying at 3%, which is not a good deal. But as we mentioned, they don't have any other choice. This is what they have to do. But Warren Buffett, he has a choice. He has the choice not to sell at 5% and buy at 3%. We will have Apple as our largest investment, but I don't mind at all under current conditions building the cash position. I think when I look at the alternative of what's available in the equity markets and I look at the composition of what's going on in the world, we find it quite attractive. Is he worried about a crash? Well, partly. When asked in early 2017 on why he was buying so much of Apple then, this is what he had to say. Let's see, we need Becky next, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Becky. Why now? Again, is there a reason for this or is it just you look at individual stocks that you wanted to own I, and you bought them? I absolutely look at individual stocks. It has nothing to do with the Federal Reserve. It has nothing to do with the election. It would have something to do with interest rates if they did something extraordinary. It hasn't had because they haven't been, they haven't changed that much. Well, interest rates changed dramatically in recent years. This was not something that anyone was expecting, that in less than a year, the Federal Reserve System was going to increase interest rates so rapidly. And of course, this changed his earlier position that stocks were the best investments because of low interest rates. Now, at the price at which Apple stocks are, it is better for him to be in cash. He's getting 5% on cash compared to only 3% on Apple shares. And Apple was over 50% of his stock portfolio and 30% of the book value of Berkshire Hathaway. Of course, when a company is trading at 30 times earnings, 3% earnings yield, in the long term, this equates to changes in the stock price. When a company is trading at 10 times earnings, 10% earnings yield, we can expect 10% returns over the long term or even more than that. But when a company is trading at 30 times earnings, there is this possibility of a multiple compression that maybe in the future, Apple is going to trade at only 25 times earnings and this will lead to the stock price going down. So it makes sense for him right now to make sure that he maximizes profits. It is not just a small position in his portfolio that he should not be worried about. It is his largest position. And when he is getting better returns on cash, why not convert it to cash? Now he is doing the reverse arbitrage that he did in the past, selling stocks, shorting stocks to buy cash. And he's right to worry about the growing government deficit and the possibility of higher taxes in the future. And he doesn't want to take that extra risk to sell Apple shares in the future, probably at lower multiples, and at the same time, pay higher taxes on these sales. And he also knows that his ownership 
of Apple will not go down because the company is buying back shares. And probably he is the one selling those shares to Apple. Fruit Tender offers. I've missed a lot of stuff in the past, so I'm actually wiser about doing that now. It won't be exactly like 2008 or 9. You can be sure of that. But you also can say that there will be times when having huge sums available extremely quickly. Maybe it'll be once every five years. Maybe it'll probably be more like once every 10 years or something. But you do, do want to be able to act when it happens. And I think the chief executive. Should some be somebody that can weigh buying businesses, buying stocks, doing all kinds of things that might come up at a time when nobody else is willing to move. If and when the market crashes, nobody knows when. He will be ready with cash on hands to go into the market and buy as many stocks as he wants. Maybe then Apple will be cheaper and he'll buy Apple again. We don't know, but we do know that there is a secret stock that Warren Buffett. Bought more in the first quarter of 2024. He actually bought 1.4 billion worth of shares of this stock. Just like I have a wild speculation on why he's selling Apple, I have another one on the secret stock that he's buying. So please have a look at it. Have a nice day and goodbye.